Hello everybody. I'm outside, but not for long, because in a moment I will head into uh, DroidCon, which is a developer conference. I've never been at a developer conference. I've obviously visited several security conferences, which I have uploaded some vlogs about that in the past, but never a development conference. And this specifically is an Android development conference, so mobile app development. And I'm here because uh, somebody on Twitter wrote me and invited me. They are actually a speaker. Unfortunately, their name is very difficult to pronounce. Egidius Lileka? <laughs> Sorry, I hope we meet him and then he can tell us uh, how to pronounce his name properly. My, my name is Egidius. Egidius. <laughs> Egidius, yeah. <laughs> I'm a security researcher, uh, digital AI, formerly at Arxon. Uh, I also used to be a security software engineer developing Android protection tools, Android application protection tools. Yeah. Anyway, he has a speaker, he got an extra ticket and asked me if I want to come and check it out. And so that's why I'm here. And I would like to figure out two things. First of all, I would like to talk to some developers and ask them about their experience about security and how much they care or know about Android security or security in general. And then I just want to compare it to a regular security conference. I can already tell you it's much bigger than a typical security conference. Uh, security conferences are usually maybe 100 people, maybe 200 people or so. And I believe here are more than a thousand or a thousand 500 attendees or something like that. The whole event here is in Berlin, so I didn't have to travel far, which is good because I this was more a spontaneous thing and I didn't plan to take off work. So I'm already very late. I unfortunately missed the talk uh, from the guy who invited me, which I feel bad about, but I made it. And maybe the other days also I can explore a little bit more. Anyway, I, I keep talking too much. Let's head inside and start exploring uh, the conference. I'm Alex. I work as a Flutter developer. I'm Yaro and I work as Flutter developer at Talsec. I'm Maria. I'm an Android developer. My name is Thomas and I'm an Android developer at N26. I mean, technically I'm not anymore, but... What does that mean? Are you... I was laid off. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. So I'm Dario Di Gregorio. I'm uh, privately here. I develop privately an app. My name is Frank. I am an engineering manager currently at Tamundo. But then on the side, I also love writing a lot of code for fun. I always have a problem with code security. That because as a mobile developer, when you develop your code, that you are always worried about nobody can reverse engineering. When they can access your code, they can create another application. We provide a product, Rasp, which protects uh, applications of our customers. Most of the times what uh, our customers consider as uh, an issue is uh, repackaging the applications. They are afraid that their application will be misused or some other people will steal data from the applications or even make some improved clone, let's say, which will uh, remove their monet monetization from their applications. So most of the time it's uh, repackaging slash tempering. Uh, reverse engineering is a big conversation right now where someone can actually do like a reverse engineer, get access to your code base and then pick out some certain things that you've actually exposed to people. So that's uh, something that I'm very usually aware of. They could intercept uh, the data that you are sending uh, in real time, like from your backend to the, to the user. If I can get access to the app code base, because that's what you do when you reverse engineer, get the source code for it. I can get to learn so many things about how they write their code, how they're thinking, how their architecture patterns is, and then I can have an entry point into how to actually mess them. Um, no, obfuscating is maybe maybe people that don't have the knowledge uh, can block them, but uh, I think uh, like with a token which is uh, generated securely and... So for example, if you want to add a new library uh, at a bank, this is not just adding it. Uh, it is going through a security process, so you need to actually go through uh, what it was called the TPRA process, which is in the end just a security check whether this uh, library is good or not good, or good to use. It is uh, important, especially when we try to choose a third-party API or a third-party library, or yeah, we are concerned about it when we try to integrate something in our app. Luckily for me, I've worked with teams where there was either one dedicated security person or there are other places where there was no dedicated security person. Have I ever fixed a security issue? Not directly, 
as you might think. It's mostly, um, I would say, like bugs, you know, that things that you would check and you're like, guys, we need to prevent someone from maybe putting a full stop as a username because that might do something or we need to prevent some certain um, usernames, for instance, allowing people to create a username called root because the admin is also called root, you know, and then it's like, oh, they can do like forgot password and then you can do a multiple bunch of things. So everything I know right now, I learned during my work. So you can catch up quite quickly because the trends are changing so fast that you don't, oftentimes you don't even need to know the old stuff. Maybe I would say that uh, people shouldn't be afraid of uh, security. Security can seem to be hard and some parts are very cryptic, but in the end, developers should think about the user first. I would say you cannot be a hacker or a pen tester without actually knowing how to develop applications. I often see people ask you, maybe, or, or just in general, on the internet, how can they be security research? Uh, uh, my answer would be like uh, by accident uh, at first, and the second, you need to be still a developer and learn to code because. Uh, only then you know how you can find exploits uh, and, and so on, yeah. Absolutely learn some new things uh, because developers maybe, we, we know their platform very well and uh, we know, you can see how we use it properly and uh, yeah, based on that maybe you can think of new stuff that you want to research. Uh, yeah, I, I still think it's, uh, it's valuable experience uh, no matter what, yeah. So there was a good talk uh, by GuardSquare. Uh, we talked about how you can uh, exploit um, Android intents to do malicious uh, activity. Then we introduce MassPS, uh, it's a, a guide uh, for application security uh, and how you can use it to um, make sure your application is secure. Uh, also, there were some other uh, talks, maybe not very interesting, but, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's good. Most of the talks are like uh, developer-related. Uh, talk, people talk about the code, yeah. I mean, how we can do stuff better and so on, yeah. All right, so I was able to talk to a couple of the developers. And what I learned from that is that they really care about like the code security. They really care about reverse engineering and protecting their apps. And that is really surprising to me because for me, I feel like, you know, the application is oftentimes just a front end for the back end. What is different to an application to the JavaScript and HTML code of a website? I understand for games why you want to maybe protect the game, but for a regular app, that's really surprised me and they seem to care a lot about that topic. I also feel like they care a lot about uh, protecting like the intellectual property. It seems generally to be a concern like, like that somebody steals the application and uploads it again. Again, a threat model I can kind of understand for games. If it's just a basic mobile game with maybe in-app purchases or so, getting the game stolen and modified to remove that or make that for free, I can kind of understand that. But again, for other non-gaming apps, personally, I just don't feel like it's like a big of a deal. So that was kind of interesting to me as well. Other than that, when I asked people about if they know any like Android or mobile app specific security issues, they don't really have like a good answer or know anything. I mean, to be fair, there are not that many like important Android security issues that are that important or that are that common like in web security. In web security, it's very easy to say like XSS or SQL injection. And one guy who was a bit more experienced with web stuff that he knew about like protecting against SQL injection and so forth. But in Android, that doesn't really exist. But again, in Android, there are also that, that these typical like security issues that maybe have a name or something like that. So uh, that is also kind of understandable. I was also surprised that nobody mentioned intents um, and how like intents can be used uh, to attack your application. But also maybe my questions just were not good specifically asking for that. Maybe I should try to ask more questions related to that because that would be really interesting to me. Other than that, I think the general vibe is, uh, is very relaxed. Personally, I feel a lot more comfortable also walking around with the camera and interviewing people. Um, it's very different to a security conference. I do wonder what that is. And so I thought about it a little bit and reflected. And 
maybe it is not because the people are more chill because i don't know they look like developers kind of i think the people look the same like in a security conference but maybe it is because in a security conference i feel more pressure and more competitive i want to be a cool hacker i don't want to be just a youtuber or something like this i want that people respect me and uh, you know like think i'm a cool hacker and here at the developer conference i feel more anonymous nobody recognized me nobody walked up to me and said hi um, and, and so I feel a lot more anonymous. It's a lot easier for me to, uh, to record uh, something here. So I think I feel it's more relaxed just because, you know, it's uh, less pressure and I don't feel less competitive to all the other people in, um, in the conference. Um, but maybe it's also because just the vibe is more relaxed. Also, there are lots of booths here, which I found interesting. I mean, there are some security conferences also with booths, but it's also not really intrusive. Um, so yeah, I don't mind it. Um, also, I've heard that there are several security companies also on those booths, but again, they are all about like protecting the application, obfuscation, and maybe a little bit of scanning uh, for security. But yeah, the code security, the deobfuscation, um, or rather the obfuscation of the application, uh, that seems to be like the big thing uh, for these uh, security companies. All right, so that was it for the first day, I guess. Um, so see you uh, another time. All right, it's the second day. I'm back here at DroidCon. Again, it's a little bit late in the day because I had to work, so I didn't spend my whole day here. I missed all of the talks and maybe the last talk is running right now. But I did check the agenda and apparently at 6 p.m. there's movie night and they say here, join us for a cheesy 80s or 90s hacking movie at the venue. So I want to figure out what this movie is about. Maybe it's hackers. That's the only one that comes to mind right now. But uh, yeah, I definitely want to check it out and I update you uh, what movie exactly is playing. I also want to continue some of the interviews today. Um, I have a better camera equipment today. I forgot some of the stuff yesterday. So now it should be a little bit smoother doing the interviews, though you probably won't notice because uh, that's behind the camera stuff. I don't know if you hear it. My voice is a little bit hoarse. It was a little bit worse last night because I'm not used to talk to people. Usually throughout the day, I'm just quiet in front of my computer. And so whenever I am at an event and I talk for just a few hours with people, my voice is fucked. So yeah, let's see how my voice will be um, after today. But I don't know if it comes across uh, through the camera. My girlfriend told me, oh my God, your voice is hoarse again. All right, so let me grab the camera and then I will head back in and see if I can find some more people uh, to interview. Hello, this is Live Overflow, your professional YouTuber signing in from at home. After I recorded my shtick outside, I went inside and I tried to find somebody to interview. I turned on the camera, the screen came on, immediately turned off again and nothing and I thought my camera is broken or the battery is empty which admittedly I didn't check if the battery were full I thought I charged them but maybe I didn't so very frustratingly I went back home I wasted an hour heading there and I wasted an hour going back now and you know I'm very busy with work right now so it I'm just really pissed that I wasted my time for nothing so I'm sorry that I can't give you any more interviews for today at least I can happily report I'm just an idiot Turns out I just don't understand my own camera because I accidentally turned off the screen. And after finding the button that I have to press, the camera would turn on just fine. It was literally just the screen being turned off. So yeah, sorry about that, but I hope at least it's somewhat funny. Yeah, okay. I guess I try another time tomorrow. See you there. Hello, welcome again. This is your favorite influencer who definitely understands how to prepare a camera. Well, let me tell you what I fucked up today. Today I forgot my SD card. I had everything prepared, everything was charged. I went to the venue, I walked around, sat down, unpacked my camera, turned it on. No card. Blink, 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 blink. I really couldn't believe that this happened again. How is it possible that I again fucked up? Well, I then wrote this tweet, asked if somebody maybe can lend me an SD card at the event or so, but nobody um, reached out, so no interviews of the day either. So instead I just sat down in one of the halls and uh, I started uh, working on my laptop um, and yeah, and just listened to the talk in the background. 
And one of the talks was actually kind of a security talk. Uh, this person went over the different kind of Android development frameworks and um, assessed how easy it is to intercept or instrument hook uh, with Frida, the application. And with Flutter, it got even very technical. He described how he had to use IDA and really dig deep into uh, the code um, had to do with like even offsets and so forth. So it got kind of technical. So that was kind of cool. Um, was interesting to see. The gist of that talk was basically that whatever framework you're using, um, reverse engineering and hooking is always possible. Um, that it might be more difficult with Flutter, but still possible. Again, you could tell why is he giving that talk? Because he works for a company that uh, sells a product to more protect you more from that. You know, this goes into um, all the other stuff that all the developers were saying about, you know, wanting their code protected, protect um, their app against reverse engineering and repackaging and so forth. However, to give props, um, at the end I was expecting the whole time a, a slide where it says, well, we have the solution for you um, that you can buy from us. That was not the case. At the end he said that his company has a booth here and people can talk to um, them, but he did not really mention that their products uh, solve this issue or so, which I think is great. I already kind of mentioned it to me personally, the whole repackaging and anti-reverse engineering shouldn't be that big of a deal to developers. I feel like they uh, fear something they shouldn't fear. And I'm looking a bit critically at those companies uh, selling these uh, protection uh, solutions. Um, it does sometimes feel a little bit like snake oil or unnecessary fear mongering. Um, so, so I was kind of like expecting that the talk would at the end like really de delve into the, the, the snake oil uh, solution basically. But I think the way how uh, he has done it was uh, perfectly fine. He provided technical information, which was interesting. And then really at the end, only at the end basically uh, said that, um, yeah, they have a booth. Also, I have to give props. The slide designs are just really, really nice. Um, look at those slides. They look just so much nicer than in security conferences. Security conferences, they are really, really lazy with the slides oftentimes. And you could feel this person practiced the talk as well. It was not an ad hoc presentation or anything. Um, it felt uh, coherent and so forth. That's something a lot of people on security conferences don't do. At least it feels that way. Well, I guess uh, that was it. Um, I'm very, very sorry that I couldn't film more interviews I was really eager to so hopefully at least you find it funny how I fucked up twice um, yeah sorry about that maybe somebody invites me to another conference and then I can uh, do this again thank you very much uh, for watching this video I'm really sorry that uh, this kind of like uh, went sideways and didn't work out how I imagined this to work out I guess I'm known for bad stuff for example the life over font that's a very bad handwritten font which I don't know what you would use it for but you can buy it on shop.liveover flow.com if you want to support my videos. It will be as frustrating and bad as an experience as was the camera experience for me. So if you want to suffer a little bit like me, um, check out the font. I don't know. This, I don't know. This was a weird ad. I don't know what to say. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon.